Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for France for EU4 1.34 Lions of the North. So France is a nation located in the region of France as the name suggests and in 1444 it is one of the most powerful nations in the world whether in the hands of a player or in the hands of the AI and it will continue to be one of the dominant nations throughout the rest of the game once again whether through the hands of a player or in the hands of the AI. As France we also start off with five subjects right here Armagnac, Auvergne, Bourbon, Foix and Orleans and we also start off allied with Provence and guaranteed Scotland and with this extensive mission tree that has been added since Emperor we can go on to dominate Western and maybe even Eastern Europe and establish large colonial holdings. France's national ideas are of course very very good we start off with plus 20% national manpower and plus one diplo rep and as a finisher we have plus 5% discipline then we have diplomatic relations plus 20% morale of armies which is insane plus 10% tax some colonial stuff minus 20% fort maintenance tech discount and plus two tolerance of heritage and heathens. So with those national ideas, this starting position, and the amazing mission tree, you can go on to dominate the game as this nation. And before we begin, if you enjoy this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides or more EU4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's take a look at what we need to do as France. Alright, alright, so here we are as France, and as you all know, at the start of the game, we're technically at war with England because we're waiting for the surrender of main event to fire where we can possibly get into a war with England. Now that event has been changed so that it's a reconquest war for us, and basically we can reconquer the scores right here and it's a subjugation war for England where basically they try to enforce their PU on us so maybe there isn't a need for us to declare an offensive war ourselves but here's the thing there actually is a need for us to be the offender and not the defender in this war this is for one very simple reason we want to fight Portugal in this war because we want this province right here so here's what you're gonna do right at the start before declaring on England first we're gonna go into our estates and summon the diet you can pick which Whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy religious state, clerical advisory council, and religious diplomats. We already start off with French strong duchies granted to the nobility, but we're also going to give them primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic counselors. And then we're going to give the bourgeoisie land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the bourgeoisie. French strong duchies as a unique estate privilege for France, where we gain plus three diplomatic relations instead of the regular plus two. And then you can seize land. We're not going to be kickstarting our mission tree just yet because most of the missions require us to conquer things in order to unlock them, like conquering Brittany, these provinces up here, and these provinces down here. And another thing to note, in previous guides, we've restarted until we get Burgundy friendly towards us, although that is extremely, extremely rare in these newer patches, so you don't really need to care what Burgundy does. If they choose us for the EU, that's great. If not, we're just going to fight Austria. And if they're not rivaled to you, like in my case right here, they will still hate you, but you can try improving relations with them. Next, it's time to hire some advisors. Even though we will be losing money by hiring three advisors, it's totally fine. So go ahead and get whichever level one admin advisor you want. I'm going to get this production efficiency guy. And by the way, we do have these two half cost admin advisors. I forgot about that. So you can also get one of these guys as well. We do also have a half cost diplo guy, this improved relations guy right here. I do recommend hiring him and then get a morale or a discipline level one mill advisor. I have this discipline guy right here. So the half price level two guys and a level one guy. Next, it's time for some rivalries. Make sure to rival Austria, England, and then not Burgundy if they're not rivaled to you. If they are, you can just rival them back. However, I'm just gonna rival Lithuania right here simply because they've rivaled me. Now it's time to get our diplomacy in order. As you know, we do start off allied with Provence, but we don't need that alliance, so just dissolve it immediately. Next, we're gonna ally the Pope. We should be able to do that right away, and if a day passes, I will be able to do it, and then you should ally one of Aragon or Castile, preferably Castile, and I will also do that once a day passes, and I can just royal marry them right now. So those will be your alliances, Castile and the Pope. You don't really need anyone else. We are going to keep our guarantee over Scotland for now because we don't want England pushing into them. Next, you can get your fleet together down here and build two more transports and a couple of more galleys, as much as you have sailors. Then you can put your three movement general in charge of the top army and send them down here and put the other general in charge of this army. And you should also tell one of your diplomats to improve with own subject countries. With your second diplomat, if Burgundy is not rivaled to you, like it is in my case, you can start improving with them. 
if not, just improve with your allies. This is what your alliances should look like about a month into the game. Once your armies are down here, you can simply take this bigger army right here and send one infantry regiment over to the smaller army so we can make them equal. And then once a month or two has passed, it is time to declare our first war and it's gonna be a reconquest war on England. And you can just declare a reconquest for whatever I'm gonna declare for Bordeaux right here. And if you've somehow managed to ally Burgundy, I know it's extremely, extremely difficult. You should call them into this war, even with the promise of land. But you're most likely not going to be allied to Burgundy, just like me, so you're just going to declare by yourself. At this point, England shouldn't have gotten any other strong allies except for Portugal, which they start off with. So go ahead and declare a reconquest on England. And that's our first war started. Now what you should do in this war right here is focus on sieging down Laborde and then rushing Portugal and sieging down all three of their forts. Even though these guys will have a stronger navy than you, in 99% of the cases, you will still be able to cross over to Ceuta and siege it down. So go and focus on Portugal, we're gonna piece them out, and then we're gonna go back up and beat up England. Your armies are way more powerful than theirs, don't worry if they land. As we can see, I immediately went for Ceuta right here and I was able to cross. There is no English or Portuguese navy right here. So like I said, don't worry about all of this happening right here focus on Portugal first. Put your three siege guy down in Ceuta so you get it faster and then the one siege guy can go to Evora. Make sure to stack over here and over here so they don't try to rush you. You will lose a bit of manpower but it's worth it. And once you full siege Portugal and don't worry like I said if stuff like this happens here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go ahead and separate piece Portugal, take the province of Ceuta, get war reps, and get all of their money. No need to make them end their alliance with England because if we make England break their alliance with them, they may get a stronger and more annoying ally like Austria. So just leave that alliance be, take Ceuta, money and war reps. And that's our war with Portugal done. That's why it was important for us to declare an offensive war so we can drag them in. And once you've knocked out Portugal, you can go ahead and unseize yourself and siege down everything that England has in continental Europe. Immediately after you conquer this, make sure to add it to a trade company and it will create the Iberian Charter, which is in the Sevilla trade node, but it's a trade company because it's a different continent. This will help us deal with the religious unity penalties. At this point, after starting off with Burgundy not rivaled, I am able to royal marry them, which is excellent. Like I said, if you can do this, do it, but it's totally not something that's necessary. We're gonna get Burgundy either way, whether through the Burgundian succession or by stealing them from Austria, if they pick Austria. After you've sieged down everything that England owns in continental Europe, it's time to chill, wait for the war score to tick up to the max, and wait to white piece any smaller allies they may have gotten, like the guys in Ireland or maybe someone like East Frisia, in which case you can go and siege them down. So now it's just a waiting game. In the meantime, I'm improving relations with my subjects, with allies. While you're waiting, in order to not lose that much money from the forts you've sieged down, you can simply transfer occupation to random subjects of all the forts that you've conquered so you won't have to pay for them yourself of course you're gonna get them back when you're ready to peace out at this point i'm also gonna build two more galleys right here and one more light ship don't worry that we're over force limit and once you take up to max war score with england and peace everyone else out here's what you're gonna take from england in this first war right here and the most important province we want to take is the province of dublin right here in ireland we can take this province right here because there is no fort so we don't even need to occupy it or anything near it and after after we take that province, we're also going to get war reps right here and then everything over up here. You can leave these three provinces or maybe you've gotten more war score and you can take one or two more, but it's going to be easy war score for later, of course, assuming Castile or Burgundy don't gobble them up. So whatever you do, either take everything up here or everything down here because we will want to unlock one branch of our mission tree. In my case, I'm going to do it like this and a little bit of money as well. Why not? And that's our first war with England done. At this point, we will immediately be releasing another vassal, the nation of Meath. They will receive this province right here. And now there are Irish subject, which will feed all of Ireland too. And once you wrap up your first war with England, you'll be able to take the mission Reconquer Normandy if you've taken everything up here, and Reconquer Gascony if you've taken everything down here. When you take the mission Reconquer Normandy, this event happens. And we get the Ducal Ring of Normandy, the clergy and bourgeoisie lose some land, and Normandy loses their cores. At this point, we also gain claims on Brittany and a subjugation 
Section CB. After you've released your subject myth up here, you can go ahead and go into the diplomatic feedback mode and select all of these provinces right here as provinces of interest. That way myth will spy on its neighbors and we'll be able to declare on them. And to save some money at this point, you can delete the fort in Hot Poitou right here and the one in Cayenne as well. After you're done with your first England war, you should chill a bit for about a year maybe and then get ready for your next war, which is probably going to be versus Provence. Now, you may notice here that in my case, Provence doesn't exist because they got declared on by Brittany, Burgundy, and the Pope, so they've disappeared. But of course, normally they'd have these three provinces right here, Anjou, these two right here, and Lorraine would be their subject in these two provinces right here. And when you declare on Provence, if Burgundy is your ally, make sure to feed as much as you can to them, because we're going to be getting the Burgundian succession later, and basically we're going to get their provinces. And then you can take this and maybe something down here. If Burgundy is not your ally, then you can take whatever you want, Anjou or these provinces right here, or maybe you could even push into this area. It's totally up to you. So that's what you would be doing. I'm just not doing it because, well, Provence doesn't exist. If you're fighting Provence, or even if you're not, you should start spying on Morocco. Once you've teched up to tech 4 in all categories, you should activate Encourage Development in Ile de France right here and Dev Paris up to 30 Development. This will help us achieve the Age objective and it'll also speed up the spawning of the Renaissance slightly. So it's already 887 in my case. I'm just gonna do that right there, that right there, and that right there. That's enough. After that, you can activate the advancement effort. As friends, we also start off with two monuments. The Notre Dame Cathedral at tier 2 gives us tolerance of the true faith plus 1 and yearly papal influence plus 1. And we also get Versailles, which at tier 3 gives us some nice vassal stuff along with tax. Decent monuments, although you don't have to focus on building them too heavily. Do it when you have spare cash. At this point, you should be good on money, in which case you should start building some marketplaces. Of course, build them in all the center of trade and estuary provinces. If you go right here into the production interface and go on a marketplace, you should probably build them in every province, which gives you more than two trade power. That's how you know they have marketplaces. So I'm going to put one right here in Paris, one right there and one right there. And we have some more money, so I'm going to put one right here. If you've taken everything up here, you will get this event as well, the Duke of Alençon, where we can make Alençon a vassal and they pop out, or select the second option, Alençon belongs to the crown, where we lose stab and the nobility loses loyalty. Even though we lose stab, I recommend selecting the second option right here. After you've dealt with Provence, if you're even dealing with them at all, it's time to set your sights on either Ireland or Morocco, depending on which area is the easiest to conquer in. Of course, Ireland would be easier, but I do suggest taking on Morocco first if you can, if they still haven't allied the Ottomans. In my case, they haven't allied the Ottomans, and Tunis wouldn't even come in to help them, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to declare on them. But like I said, you can go for Morocco or Ireland. Of course, over here, you're gonna feed your subject myth everything that you conquer. In my case, they've already spied on one nation right here, and they'll continue to spy on everyone else because we did set everything here as provinces of interest. So because I'm gonna be fighting Morocco, I'm gonna be taking my armies down here to Ceuta. And now that my armies are down here, I'm simply going to go ahead and declare on Morocco for the conquest of whatever I've spied on, in my case Tangier. You're going to be doing the same. If we're fighting just Morocco, and in this case Granada like me, your navy will be more powerful than them. However, if you're fighting Tunis as well, don't pull out your navies because these two nations will have a stronger navy together than yours. Since as France, the nobility is already pretty influential and they will have high land ownership for your tier 2 government reform, I recommend taking compromise with the nobility. This means that increased levies no longer increases their influence and no longer decreases max absolutism, which is excellent. We basically gain all that manpower from increased levies for free, which is 27.6% in my case, and we also get a nice minus 10% and stab cost. You can go with strength and noble privileges if you want to, but I don't think it's needed since we already start off with manpower, so we don't want to get the nobles too influential. Later on in the game, when the estates won't have as big of a hold in your country past the age of absolutism when you start revoking privileges, you can totally go ahead and swap to strength and noble privileges. Although once again, by that point, you won't be needing all that manpower, so you can simply go with Noble Officer Corps. This is a pretty good second choice as well, but I do recommend compromise with the nobility. 
Now, if you're fighting Granada as well, you can totally go ahead and take stuff from them as well. They do have pretty nice provinces. However, my case here to simulate the fact that by this point, Castile will have already probably gotten this. I'm simply going to piece them out for war reps and money and just pretend that they don't exist, which is most likely going to be the case in your game. At some point in the game, you may get this event, the Anjou claims to the Kingdom of Naples, where you can get a restoration of Union CB on Naples. This is just chance. And of course, if you do get this event, you should take this first option right here where you gain a restoration of Union CB on Naples. They will most likely be free and they might have some strong allies. In my case, they're allied to Austria and Milan, but this won't prevent us from enforcing RPU over them. So there's another possible war right there. Once you beat up Morocco enough, here's what I recommend taking from them in this first war. You will want to get these four coastal provinces right here in the Sevilla trade node, along with the super annoying fort in Fez, so you won't have to siege it down 27 times once you fight them again. Of course, you could push on further and take the gold mine in Tafilat as well, a very valuable province that would increase your income by quite a lot, but I don't think it's necessary to do that in your first war. So you can take these two provinces as well if you want to, but if not, just do this right here along with war reps and as much money as you can. And that's your first war with Morocco done. You should have gotten this for sure and maybe these two provinces as well. Once you're done with Morocco, it's time to go back to France and chill a bit and maybe move on Ireland. Or if you've gotten the restoration of Union CB on Naples or even Milan, it's time to try and enforce our PU over one of these two guys. Of course, don't forget to add everything else here to a trade company as well, to the Iberian Charter and now our newly created Maghreb Charter as well. Now we have two trade companies, in the Sevilla and in the Safi trade nodes. At this point, you can delete one of these two ports, I will be deleting the one in Ceuta. Since by this point, more than 10 years have passed for sure, you can go ahead and give the nobility the nobility integration policy. This will increase their influence by quite a lot, but it will remove the penalty from Diplo annexing subject. So give the nobles the nobility integration policy, and go ahead and annex whichever subject of yours has more than 190 opinion of you. I'm gonna annex Orlean right here. For your naval doctrine, you can honestly take whatever you want as France. Shipboarding is pretty good, we won't have to build boats. Merchant Navy is good for protecting trade power, although not that useful, and galley combat is as powerful as always. In my game right here, I'm gonna go with shipboarding. And in my game right here, after flip-flopping a million times, Burgundy have finally decided to like me again, and at this point, I will secure an alliance with them and royal marry them. Another tip that I don't say too often is make sure you send a royal marriage offer to Burgundy and don't accept theirs. Because if you accept theirs, when their ruler dies, it gets broken. So we always want to send them a royal marriage offer. Now that I'm back over in France and we're done with our war with Morocco, I'm going to be declaring on Naples with the restoration of Union CB, since Austria isn't that strong anyway. In your case, after you've dealt with Provence, probably, and after you fought in Ireland or Morocco, it's time to once again shift to another region. So because I fought in Africa, now I'm going to go back to Europe. If you fought in Ireland, you're gonna go to Africa. If you fought in Africa, you're gonna go to Ireland. You know the drill. We're basically shifting our focus in different areas of conquest. And like I said, I'll be declaring on Naples with the restoration of Union CB. Now that I've defeated Austria, I'm gonna piece them out and make them in their alliance with Aragon because I will want to reconquer Naples, of course, from Aragon right here. So that's a perfect little opportunity right there. And along with that, I'm also gonna get war reps and some money. And now I'm gonna go PU Naples. Like I said, don't worry if you're not PUing Milan or Naples, this is just an added bonus to our campaign. If you're not doing something like this, focus on Morocco, Ireland, or small nations in France like Brittany and Provence. For your first idea group as France, I do recommend opening up with Diplo ideas. This will help us have more diplomatic relations since we are playing quite heavily with subjects and we will kinda continue to do so. However, more importantly, the plus 25% improved relations and the Diplo rep will help us avoid coalitions. Province war score cost minus 20% will enable us to take more and lower impact on stability from diplomatic actions will enable us to royal marry a bunch of nations that have disputed succession and try and get our dynasty on the throne and maybe some PUs, and it'll enable us to break those royal marriages without suffering penalties. Of course, if you don't feel like Diplo is good enough, I recommend opening up with a mill idea group such as offensive or quality. Offensive slightly more. I'm gonna go with Diplo right here in my case. After you beat up Naples or Milan and full siege them or get at least 60% war score, it's time to enforce your union over them and get all of their money. By this point, you may have Milan, you may have Naples, or if you're super lucky, you may have both of them. For your first age ability, you should take Justified Wars. When you're in Ireland and you decide to fight the Irish guys that Meath have made claims on, just simply select the weakest nation that you can fight. Try and co-belligerent their allies, 
if you can't do it, if not, it's no big deal, and simply go ahead and conquer all of this up. These are very, very easy wars, and you'll have them done in no time. Don't worry about aggressive expansion in this region. Don't forget to take new burger loans from time to time like I just did, and continue to build buildings. Marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces, maybe build a church here and there, and of course later, you're most importantly gonna focus on workshops. If you did get Naples as a junior partner, you should focus on getting their course back from Aragon before the Iberian wedding happens. In my case, it did just happen, so I won't be doing that myself, but if this also happens to you, later when Castile annexes Aragon, you can simply beg Castile to give Naples' scores back through this interaction right here, return core province. And when you do conquer land in Ireland, simply transfer everything to Meath and give them everything and take everyone's money. Once your truce with England is up, and it should be in the early 1460s, it's time for our second war against them. And before this, you're gonna wanna move both of your armies up to Ireland. And when you're ready, it's time to declare on England once again, and once again with a reconquest CB for the provinces that you haven't taken. And before this war, if you don't have these provinces right here, Make sure to ask for mill access through whichever nations exist here, in my case Ulster, which I've already done, and Scotland, which of course I've also already done, and you will be able to cross with both armies in time before England's navy gets there. So simply go ahead and declare another reconquest for whatever you're gonna take, and call in anyone if you want to. I am gonna call in Castile, so they help me deal with Portugal, but if I call in Castile, Portugal won't even come, so that's excellent. And it's time to fight England for the second time. If you're allied to Burgundy, make sure to call them in as well so you can give them something like Calais. In my case, they wouldn't come in. Now I'm gonna call in Burgundy simply so I can give them Calais. That's the only reason. Like I said, if we're allied to Burgundy, we do want to feed them as much as possible, and we do want to let them conquer everything that they want to, because we're banking on getting their provinces later, with the Burgundian succession. Of course, if you're not allied to Burgundy, if you're rival to them, try to avoid fighting them. There's no need to do so. And once you're done with the second war with England, here's what you're gonna take. Obviously, you're gonna take everything that's remaining in continental Europe, basically your course back. If you haven't taken Calais in the earlier war, you can do it now, or give it to Burgundy if they're in the war as well, which is precisely what I'm doing. Then you're gonna take these four provinces right here, and then everything else that you want to down this way up until 50-ish aggressive expansion. So I'm gonna take Coventry, Oxford, and Sussex. And that's about enough for now. I'm also gonna get war reps. And this is a little something what your second war with England should look like. Now I know we took some weird provinces and stuff like that, but trust me, there's a reason behind everything. But most importantly, once you reconquer the remaining continental provinces, you will be able to take the mission and reconquer Gascony, where we gain perma claims on Provence and the Loire Valley. Basically, these areas right here. You will also be able to take the mission and the Hundred Years War, where we gain perma claims on some other things. And we gain stability and admin points. These are the other provinces we got claims on. Burgundy should be owning them in your game as well. But after we've taken these provinces over here, we're gonna release two more vassals. Yes, of course, we are way over our relations limit. It's totally not a big deal. But we're gonna release the nation of Northumberland so we can reconquer these cores that they own, these five provinces right here. And you can also release the nation of Wales if you want to, so we can reconquer these three provinces right here. This isn't that necessary, but do make sure to release Northumberland. And there we go. Now we got two more vassals right here, and we've taken these provinces right here and split England in two. Now some nations up here might be mad, but it's no big deal. It's time to core everything up. After this point, you can go ahead and revoke your guarantee on Scotland because we'll want to fight them. Of course, you should always keep annexing your subjects in continental Europe. I'm gonna be annexing Armagnac now. Don't forget to reduce autonomy whenever you can. This'll net us more income, more trade value, more manpower, more everything. Lowering autonomy is good. You will have to fight a few rebel stacks, but it's always worth it, because that also gives you army tradition. At this point, I'll be finally declaring on Brittany, and you should be doing the same going back to continental Europe, because like I said, we started off fighting here, then we went to Africa, then we went to the British Isles, then we went to Great Britain and Ireland, so now we're back in France. So I'll be making Burgundy end their alliance with Brittany, which is precisely the reason I haven't fought them. There we go, just like that. And now I can go ahead and declare on Brittany. You should be doing something similar, maybe fighting Brittany, maybe Provence, maybe even the Pope if they've taken provinces down here. Although you should avoid that if you can. 
if you have managed to ally Burgundy like I have, make sure to keep relations with them maxed. Once you're done fighting Brittany or Provence for the second time, you should be full annexing these nations if you can, if not, take as much as aggressive expansion permits you. Even if you still have the subjugation CB on Brittany, I do think it's better to just straight up conquer them. We don't really need more vassals, we already have plenty. And of course, take all of their money. Once you do conquer or subjugate Brittany, you will be able to take the mission Subjugate Brittany, which gives us 100 Diplo points. After you've conquered Brittany or this area from Provence, you can go ahead and delete these two forts. Now that I've annexed Armagnac, I will be continuing my annexation of the French vassals with Foix. For your tier 3 government reform, you have a couple of choices. You can go with the classic centralized monarchical bureaucracy for monthly autonomy change minus 0.05, autonomy change cooldown, culture conversion cost and stuff like that. And don't pay too much attention to centralize a state will refund its costs, I do think that'll be changed pretty soon. You can also go with expanded rule of court for plus 1 possible advisors and plus 20% reform progress growth, super super strong. But as France, you could also go with representatives of the crown, which gives vassals and marches 25% more tax, and it gives us plus one diplo relations and plus 25% vassal force limit contribution. Now, this is pretty strong, but we are going to be annexing our subjects. We won't always have them. So I do think it's slightly better to go with centralized monarchical bureaucracy or expand a royal court. However, all three of these are valid options. I'm going to go with centralized monarchical bureaucracy. Now that I've once again fought in France, I will once again be heading back down to Africa and fighting either Morocco or Tafilal. You should be doing the same. Now that I'm back down in Africa, I will be declaring on Tafilal right here because they're independent and going for that gold mine. They're allied to Tunis, but it's not a big deal. Of course, if one of these guys that you want to fight are allied to the Ottomans, you may want to hold off on conquering Africa for a little bit and you can go back up to Ireland or alternative maybe you can get involved in Italy and take a province or two. And now that I have defeated Tafilalt, I will be full annexing them. Once you do take over this province right here, make sure not to add this area to a trade company by accident, and instead, once you core it, you should state it. So that's why I'm only going to add the province of draw right here to the trade company. We want to state this up, obviously, because of the gold. Now I'm also going to be annexing Bourbon. Once you hit admin tax 7, you will be able to take your second idea group and for your second idea group, I do recommend admin ideas. The main deal is here, we need that minus 25% CCR because we're conquering a lot. The merch stuff are great even though we won't be using them that much, but the main point from taking this idea group is the plus 25% gov cap modifier. As friends, you're probably already struggling with governing capacity and it's gonna get even worse once we get a hold of Burgundy. As we can see, I'm already way over my governing capacity. So admin ideas for your second idea group. Don't worry that we're not taking anything mill as France yet. We don't really need mill ideas since our military is already so powerful. You can take some later though, or maybe you opened up with offensive instead of diplo. Once you're done with your second war in the Maghreb, it's time to once again hop back over to Ireland and deal with these guys that are left. England may own some provinces, in your case too, just like they do in mine, but it's no big deal. Simply declare on whoever is the weakest and try to co-belligerent as many nations as possible. I'm fighting these four guys right now. I'll be annexing all of them and feeding all of them to Meath. And now that I've defeated all of these guys, like I said, I'll be giving it all to Meath. And while I'm here, I'll also declare on Ulster and take that province as well. You should be continuing your conquest up here too. You should try and finish off Ireland in one or two goes. And I'll be feeding Ulster to Meath as well. Now that I've cored up the provinces in Tafilalt, I will be adding this to a state, as you can see, and activating Encourage Development. You should be doing the same once you conquer this province, and try and dev it up to 10 production so we can make some nice income from gold. Of course, once the month takes over, don't forget to lower autonomy as well. While I'm still up in Ireland, I will be declaring on this nation right here because they don't have any allies, and it's the final nation left. Everything else is owned by England or by my subject. And I'll also be giving this province to the subject as well, just like that. Once you're done doing stuff in Ireland, you should once again shift your focus back to France or Italy. In preparation for this, I've broken my alliance with the Pope because I do want to get these provinces right here. It is a bad idea to fight the Pope, but hopefully after the war with some improving relations and with some buying indulgences and stuff like that, I can get him to like me again. Ideally, you'd fight Provence for this and you'd already have it, but like I said in my case, Provence didn't even exist by the time I was ready to fight them. And at this point, I have Def Tafilot up to 10 production and I can just turn this off. And there's an additional 8 ducats a month in gold. Once you start annexing a lot of your subjects, you will have a lot of free diplo slots, and I do recommend allying nations that would most likely help you versus Austria. In my case, I've linked up with Poland right here, 
which also has Lithuania. And I'm gonna try and re-ally the Pope after I fight him. And now I just helped Castile fight Morocco, but because I occupied everything myself, they've given me all of these provinces right here, which is excellent. That is something you would do in your second or your third war in the Maghreb versus Morocco or any of their subjects that might exist here. Of course, don't forget to add all of this to your trade companies, of course, except this area right here which should be a state. Now I'm gonna start annexing my final French subject, Auvergne. Once your second truce with England is up, it's time for your third war against them, where we're gonna be giving Wales all of their cores back, Northumberland all of their cores back, and taking additional things for ourselves. So simply go ahead and declare a reconquest on them for something like York, and call in your boys if you need them. I am gonna call in Burgundy and Castile just to make things easier. Although you don't really need allies, not even in your first or second wars. And once your third war with England is done, here's what you're gonna take from them. Obviously, you're gonna give Northumberland all of their cores back. You're gonna give Wales all of their cores back. I'm also gonna take all these provinces in Ireland and give them to Meath. Maybe you should do something like that as well, and then take everything else that you want to. In my case, I'm just gonna take these two provinces right here in order to connect Ireland with Great Britain, and I'm also gonna get war reps and 27.8 ducats. And that's my third war with England done. By this point, you should own most, if not all, of Ireland and about half of Great Britain, along with your subjects, of course. If you're over GovCap, you can go ahead and give the clergy or the bourgeoisie one of the GovCap privileges. I am going to give the clergy, clergy land rights. Now that I'm done with my third English war, I will be declaring on the Pope to take everything that I have left in France aside from the things that Burgundy owns. You will probably already own this yourself, I'm just doing it right now. But once again, we're cycling between the three regions that we're expanding in. France and Italy, the Maghreb, and Great Britain and Ireland. And the Burgundian succession, it just happened in my case, and I got Burgundy myself, which is very nice. If you manage to get them to like you, they will become your junior partner. If not, you are gonna have to fight Austria for them, but at this point, you're way stronger than Austria and you will be easily able to take that from them. And it's totally not unusual for it to happen by this point. In my experience, it happens even earlier, usually around the 1480s. But you know how it works by now. Burgundy either chooses to remain independent, to become a junior partner under France, under the Holy Roman Emperor, or under any other nation that they're all married to. Like I said, they won't ever start off friendly with you in these latest patches, but if you're not rivaled to them and if they're not rivaled to you, it is pretty easy to get them to like you later, just like it happened here in my case. But there's totally not a need to restart until that happens. We're gonna have Burgundy either way, either like this, like I got it, or by fighting Austria. Of course, when that happens and you get Burgundy yourself, the Burgundian Inheritance Imperial Incident will happen where Austria can demand that we release the lowlands, Austria can declare a restoration of union on us or on Burgundy, it doesn't matter, and they can abandon the claims. Usually, they'll choose one of these two options right here. They almost never abandon their claims. Let's see what happens in a year and let's see what the emperor chooses. And there we go, my war with the Pope is done. I'm just gonna take these provinces. I don't want to make the Pope any more mad than he needs to be. Once you do take these provinces right here and right here, which you will have done earlier, of course, you will be able to take the mission Conquer Provence, where we gain permaclaims on some areas that Burgundy owns. And if Burgundy is our junior partner, or if we've already inherited them, you will also be able to take this mission right here, which gives us claims on Switzerland and Savoy, and the Piedmont down here. If you get excommunicated, just like I did after fighting the Pope, all you should do is buy indulgence. This will remove the excommunication. A loan or two is worth it. And I'm gonna start improving with the Pope in hopes that it will start liking me again. If you do get Burgundy as a junior partner randomly, it's all good, they will like you. However, if you decide to steal them from Austria, make sure to improve relations right away with them because if your ruler dies and they don't have a positive opinion of you, they will break free. And there we go, there's the Emperor Demands the Lowlands event, basically Austria chose the first option and they want us to release all of these nations up here. Of course, we can oblige, but there's no way we're gonna do that. And there we go, just like that, Austria automatically declares war upon us with the Imperial Ban CB because they want us to pop out some guys. And I'm not sure if they declare automatically if they choose the second option to basically steal Burgundy back from us, but it is automatic if you reject their demands for the Lowlands. This is going to be easy. Simply go ahead and beat Austria up. You can take these provinces right here from them if you want to, 
but there's no need. Since it is a defensive war, everyone will help you out. This is not a big deal at all. And it's gonna be the same even if they choose to enforce their union over Burgundy. Pretty much the same war. Once you can take this event, the fate of Joan of Arc, you should do it. And this event happens. We gain some prestige and legitimacy. And once you completely obliterate Austria, if they even declare war on you in this scenario, or if you're actually declaring on them to steal Burgundy, you should of course demand that they transfer Burgundy over to you if you're the offender. However, if you're the defender, you can do whatever you want. In my case right here, I'm just gonna get war reps and money from them, and I'm gonna pillage their capital. And I'm gonna ask them to transfer trade power and maybe end their alliance with Bavaria and Silly. Why not? Once you build a dock in Finistere, you will be able to take this mission right here, where we gain some free boats. And if you do both of those missions, you will be able to take this mission right here, which gives us a claim on everything in Britain that's owned by England or Britain. Nice. And by around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as the nation of France and declared on England on our own because we did want to drag Portugal into that war so we can gain a foothold into the Maghreb and then reconquered some of our cores, took Ceuta and took Dublin as well. So we have two more opportunities to expand. And after that, we just kept shifting our focus from conquering in the region of France and maybe in Italy, in the region of the Maghreb and then in Ireland and in Great Britain as as well. By this point, you should own all of the region of France, except for the stuff that Burgundy owns, and Burgundy may be your junior partner if the Burgundian succession has happened. They may have chosen you if they were friendly, if not, then you should have stolen them from Austria and taken all of this for yourself. Of course, the Burgundian succession might not have happened yet, in which case you'll wait around a little bit more. Over in the Maghreb, you should have a fairly sizable portion, at least, of the Safi trade node. This is what I own in my case. You will have a little bit of a mix-up here going on with Portugal and Castile because they will be conquering land over there as well but you should own as much as you can in this region it's not super super important to take everything but you should have a slight focus on the gold mine in Tafila. This is what I own right now. You may have a little less or a lot more than me. It doesn't matter. Everyone's game is different. Over in Great Britain, your subject Meath should own all of Ireland by this point, and you shouldn't have integrated them yet because you probably haven't finished admin ideas. Once you do, then you can integrate them. Northumberland and Wales should have all of their cores back, and you should own some provinces in Scotland and in England as well. Something possible that may have happened in your games as well is that you might have enforced your PU over over Naples and you might have enforced your PU over Milan. In my case, Milan is still a duchy. That event still hasn't happened yet, so I do still have a chance of getting it. Although these two things right here are totally not necessary for your game and they're just bonuses that you may get. But this is pretty much what you should own by now. Of course, by this point, we are a super, super powerful nation, probably the number one great power in the world. If you have Burgundy, as we can see, I am the number one great power in the world, more dev than even Ming, so we are super, super powerful. Our economy should be booming by this point. I am making about 20 ducats a month right now with full armies built up to force limit, by the way, 67 out of 67. And this is my main army right here, 2447. And this is the secondary army, 2441. I still don't have enough cannons to buff this one up to the max. But with army maintenance down and forts down, we are making more than 30 ducats a month, which is excellent as we can see. And you should be making around the same. By this point, of course, you should have been building a ton of buildings because we will be rich right from from the get-go. I have marketplaces in all the center of trade and estuary provinces. I have workshops in all the high-value trade good provinces, a couple of churches here and there, a couple of army buildings here and there, and a couple of navy buildings here and there as well, and you will continue to do so. You should have also upgraded all of your centers of trade to level 2. I haven't upgraded some of them because they're still not in states because, like you know, we are struggling slightly with GovCap at this point, although that won't be an issue once you wrap up admin ideas. Speaking of ideas, we did open up with Diplo and admin or offensive and admin depending on your choice and of course france does have colonization stuff in its national ideas and we do have a colonization branch of the mission tree down here so the game sort of does want us to colonize although you don't have to focus on that if you don't want to if it's not your thing if you're going for colonization exploration and expansion are great picks for your third and fourth idea groups don't open up with exploration expansion there's no need to so diplo admin exploration expansion if you're going colonial and then it's up to you However, if you're not going colonial after Diplo and Admin, you can go for trade and economic to make even more money, or you could take a mill idea group such as quality, offensive, or even defensive, and then one of economic or trade for your first four idea groups. 
after that, it's totally up to you. For your tier 4 government reform, you should maintain the balance of power. For your tier 5 government reform, you should take meritocratic recruitment. For your tier 6 government reform, you can go with royal decree or aristocratic court or general estates. They're all pretty good. For tier 7, you should embrace free trade or take embrace the economic theory. For tier 8, you can take the social contract and not get any penalties from heretic and heathen provinces, but it might be a little redundant with liberté, égalité, and fraternité right here. So in that case, you should go with the six livers of the republic. For tier 9, you can go for kingdom of the people for plus one possible policies to have four instead of three policies. But if not, you should go for regional representation or let us moi. And for tier 10, you should take political absolutism. And after this point, you will continue to expand in all the same directions that we've been expanding in. You're going to continue to fight England and Scotland over in Great Britain until you get the entire island of Great Britain and you own everything in this region right here. You will continue to push into the Maghreb at least up to here and you should continue to conquer Tunis as well and trade company everything in the Tunis and Safi trade nodes. If you're colonizing, of course, go for stuff in North America and in the Caribbean and do trade companies in Africa, India and Southeast Asia. And you should also continue to push into Italy slowly. Aggressive expansion will be pretty high, but you should aim to own the entire region of Italy up until a certain point. And because Austria shouldn't be that powerful by now, if you've beaten them up because of Burgundy, you can try and ally a bunch of electors. So you get yourself elected as the HRE emperor, or you should once again ally all electors, but try to dismantle the HRE instead if you want to go conquering in this region right here. After you take care of the regions of Britain, France, Italy, and the Maghreb, you might want to try and push into Iberia as well, or you might bank on getting your dynasty on Castile's throne. In my case, I already have it, but it's a queen. And you can try and enforce your personal union over Castile and Aragon, and maybe even Portugal. It's totally up to you, or you can just straight up conquer them. And by the end of your game, you should aim to own Britain, the Low Countries, France, Italy, the Maghreb, and Iberia over in Europe. That's a solid little goal right there, and maybe something else outside of Europe. But if you want to go for more, you can totally go for Egypt, the Mashriq, Anatolia, the Balkans, and everything else, and even try and restore the Roman empire and like i said by around the 1490s your realm should look a little something like this let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that i should do a guide on if you want to watch me do stuff like this live you can follow me on twitch.tv slash live and if you want to catch up on stuff from over there you can subscribe to the second channel link is in the description if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you want to see more guys like this or more u4 videos in general definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video